levels. We under-resourced, we underinvested, we underbelieved, and today that gap remains unacceptably large. Closing the achievement gap is about so much more than education. I'm convinced it's a daily fight for social justice. It's also an economic issue. If the achievement gap of students of color doesn't, if the achievement of students of color doesn't increase, they won't be able to, to succeed in college. If we don't graduate more students from college, their personal economic prospects will be limited. And the impact of the achievement gap goes far beyond the communities where the achievement is the lowest. It's an economic program problem for the entire country. The McKinsey Company published a report in April saying that our achievement gap is dragging down our entire country's economic growth. It suggests that the gap could put our country into an economic recession that is deeper and longer than the one we're experiencing right now. But despite the real challenges and the devastating impact of inaction and complacency, I'm actually very, very optimistic that we can do dramatically better for all of our children, and especially for children coming from disadvantaged communities. I believe we have a perfect storm for reform. We have a president and a first lady who in symbol and substance embody the value of an education. They have made going to school cool and hip. Neither one of them was born with a silver spoon in their mouths, but they are who they are, literally the leaders of the free world, because they worked hard, had great teachers, and got a great education. The president also has the courage to challenge all of us, everybody, not just political and educational leaders, but very significantly parents and students themselves, to hold themselves accountable and responsible for getting a quality education. I've met repeatedly with congressional leaders on both sides of the aisle, and they all share, their universe, they're united in the view that education is the one issue that has to rise above both politics and ideology. Last week, former President Bush announced that education will be one of the top priorities of his new policy institute. Their first item on their research agenda is improving the quality of principles. But if anyone is still not convinced that education is the most bipartisan issue in America today, the surest proof is that I'm now traveling the country visiting schools with two people whose political DNA couldn't be less alike, Reverend Al Sharpton and my new good friend, the speaker Newt Gingrich. <laughs> Our conversations and the, inter in and the interchange are absolutely fascinating. We don't agree on everything, but we do agree that our schools need to get dramatically better for all of our children, whether they live in cities, suburbs, small towns, or rural communities. And the urgency to improve is coupled with genuine hope. We have never had more examples of successful schools in districts and states throughout the country. We all should be praising them for their success and encouraging others to follow their examples. 